Okay, hello everybody, this is Badrich. Let's continue our uh, sub keys script that uh, eventually will look like this. It will create a, a dance notification and, uh, with the last key binding we, we uh, executed f from i3. But right now the output looks like this or maybe this super shift e it says here but here it says shift mod for e and then we have a lot of junk in in the line here that we need to take care of and the command line uh, uh, all we want here is this part so this this video will be about how to uh, uh, clean up these uh, strings a bit uh, 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 let's get started we, we got this place here, this get mods, that is where we uh, uh, store each modifier found in the key binding. Um, we do this, this is the kind of the normal output, you know. Remember, if $1 is mods, which it is here, get mods is equal to 1. And then it tests if, if get mods is equal to 1. Uh, in a variable called kmod is equal to the old value of kmod plus the last field. And here, uh, get mods is equal to 1, the last field is this, and here, get mods is equal to 1, the last field is here. And then we will actually set get mods is equal to 0 if the last character of a record is a closing bracket, which is what this test is doing. So that's where we are, and uh, if we should start with cleaning up this uh, 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 this string, this list here, I think we start by removing uh, quotes, double quotes, and uh, brackets from uh, the modifier list, and we store the modifiers here. So I think it's the uh, appropriate way to to do this. Hmm, Two, so, so what we want to do is remove brackets and double quotes from, from uh, the NF field, basically. There are uh, a couple of ways we could do this, uh, either by using the sub or the G sub uh, function within awk. There is a, a, a serious uh, drawback with using this, we cannot actually even, we, we, we shouldn't do that. Because both of these functions, when you use these to substitute uh, uh, patterns in a string, that will actually modify uh, the string you are searching in. And in this case, it would be an F here. And if we modify an F, that actually modifies the whole record. And if we would remove the closing bracket from the last field, it would also remove it from dollar zero and then this test would never pass because we would have cleaned that that thing out so there's another uh, substitution function that's called gen sub that does almost the same thing as sub first uh, you write a pattern the pattern is a character class uh, and the character class consists of brackets and a double quote so three characters in this character class. Uh, if we find a match, replace it with nothing. Uh, and then in gen sub, you have to specify if you want, because g sub and, and sub, they are the same thing, except for g sub is a global sub substitution. It will uh, substitute every found occurrences of the pattern. Sub will only uh, uh, replace the first uh, occurrence of the pattern in the search string. But gen sub, uh, here you have to specify if you want it to be either global or if you want to replace the first or the second or two, I, I don't remember. But let's do global here because we want to replace every occurrence of this pattern, meaning every character that is a closing bracket, an opening bracket or a double quote. And then also last but uh, most importantly, the string we are doing these tests on. And that is nf, which is a string containing the last field of the output. Uh, 
gen sub is also different here because it uh, sub and g sub, as I just said, they they uh, actually manip manipulate. Um, yeah, if you wanted to write this as a sub, it would look like this. You just remove this, so so it's almost the same syntax for for all of these. Uh, but when you are doing gen sub, that will not print anything. That will not sh that will not even change the enough uh, uh, value here. What it does is it returns uh, a new string, uh, so we can store that in a new variable that we can call mod is equal to the output of this gen sub function, and then instead of using nf here we do this, and now super s. Now we can see the the uh, uh, brackets and the double quotes from the modifier list is removed. I know th th this. It's just this thing and I've been talking about five minutes of, about weird stuff here, but whatever. That's how it works. Now you know. Uh, uh, uh. Another thing that's different here from my final output is uh, that it says super and we have a shift with a capital S. Here we have a shift with a lowercase s and it says mod4. So I would like to rename all the modifiers actually. Uh, and we can use our good old friend ternary expressions here to do that. Uh, 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 maybe we should write it. No, let's do it like this. Mod is equal to mod for if that is true, return super. If it's not true, do a new test. Mod is equal to shift uh, return shift with a capital S mod is equal to mod1 return alt and mod is equal to control with the lowercase c return control with a capital C and if none of those matches return an empty string so here you can see that you can use, the, this is the exact same syntax for ternary expressions as it is in Bash and many other languages. But with the difference that in Awk you are not bound to only mathematical or ar arithmetic tests. You can, you can do string comparison and whatever inside of these arithmetic tests, making them very powerful and, and you can write this nice thing here instead of having a long... Uh, entangled nested if else thing you know you get this nice little block here um, and yeah let's test it now it should have renamed the keys so now it says super plus s super shift e it says shift super e okay another obvious thing here is that here it says super shift e but here it says shift super e i know this might be like a uh, 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 a small thing, but I, I, I really like to, to have super as the first modifier uh, listed and shift, I want that as the last, and then control and alt in between. This is actually a little bit more complicated than you might first think, but whatever, we can do it. But before we do that, I think we should also take care of this, uh, the, the leading plus character of, of, of the string here. And sometimes we, we might actually get uh, two plus characters. I think we do that here. Yeah, because now I, I, I have a key binding bound to the back button of the mouse, button 8. And that doesn't have any modifiers. And then we get two plus characters uh, uh, at the beginning of, of, of the key binding string here. Um, it's not uh, weird. It, it, it's we who add these plus signs here. Uh, because if we don't have any modifiers, then this will just be an empty string, you know. And then kmod will just be an empty string plus uh, a plus character plus an empty string. Meaning kmod is a plus character. And then we also uh, append the symbol uh, e or whatever it is. Or button 8 is the symbol uh, in this case. Then we append the sim symbol to kmod plus character symbol and here kmod is plus character we have add a plus character and sim so that's why we get the those extra plus characters um now we could use um sub g 
in this in the, now it doesn't really matter which one of, of these we use but uh, let's do a gen sub again now, let's create a, a string that we call uh, key string is equal to gen sub uh, write the pattern look something like character class with a plus repeat that one or more times replace it with nothing uh, and here we can enter one for just do this substitution once and the string we are searching in is this uh, we should also be sure that the pattern only matches the beginning of the string now this should work super s yes super shift e yes go back no uh, leading plus characters we could actually uh, yeah th this is good uh, just to show you that we don't even need this variable here we could print the output of gensub also maybe that that uh, makes it easier to understand how gensub works and differs from from sub because you cannot print or if you print sub or gsub it will just print one or zero depending on if if it found a match or not but this actually prints a new string but let's store it in, in this variable okay now to the order thing and and this is a bit uh, uh, weird and may, uh, there are of course as always other ways uh, different ways to do the same thing but I found this uh, uh, method. Uh, we create a, an array called mod order containing uh, uh, keys with the same name as uh, the modifiers, our translated modifiers here. So super and shift with the capital F, S and, and stuff. It, it, it's important that it, it's the exact same name as this here. Um, and then uh, 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 I like to set these the values for these to a number. And now let's take a look at uh, some some awk stuff here. If if we loop this array here, mod order, you can do it like this in awk. For m in mod order, and then print m. And also this begin block here. That will only get executed once before it starts processing the, the uh, input uh, that it gets from, from uh, yeah, the pipe here. So this would only get executed once. Uh, so this for loop will just get executed once. Uh, it will loop this array and M will be the name of a key in the array. But here, question mark. Uh, in what order will it process this array here now? Let's take a look sub keys here now it did this loop here and it prints shift super alt control and as you can see there is no logic to this order really it's not alphabetical it's not uh, based on, on on the way it's defined here it's not based on the values I, I have no idea how it lists this and that's the thing it's very unpredictable when you loop an array uh, it's hard to, to know uh, in, in what order you cannot really rely rely on any specific order but I just found out that you can actually set this magical uh, uh, variable or value in, in a built-in awk array. This is probably only available in Gawk, GNU awk, I think so. But here we set the sort order of arrays to this. Numeric ascending based on the value. And the value is this. Uh, and this is called the key. Uh, name. So you can also sort it by key names and you can sort it by numeric value or alphabetical or, or ascending, descending and so on. You can do a lot of, of things here. And now if we have this value set and, and uh, uh, execute the command again, now the order is super shift alt control. And that's the same order as it's written here, but it actually, the, the order it's written doesn't matter at all. If I would move a sh super here to this location, it, we would still get the same uh, output here because it loops it in the same order and the order is based on the value uh, and the numeric value of the value so uh, one have the lowest so that will be the first uh, 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 item in, in the array 
because it have the lowest value here. If we would change this one to uh, four, three, six, which was just a random number, now that is the highest number and it will be the last in this list. And this is how we can be sure uh, uh, of an order of an array. I think this is really cool, cool stuff. I didn't know about this uh, before. And uh, this is something I can make use of in, in other uh, uh, scripts as well. So the order I like these in is uh, super first and then uh, shift last. So let's set this to uh, 555 and set this to zero. And now we should get a good list here. Super first, shift last. And of course, the, these numbers doesn't... Yeah, it would just process them in, in order. But I really want super to be the first. So zero, it's, it, it's a very low number, you know. And 555 five, five is a very high number. But they could just as well be 1, 2, 3, 4. It would work as well. Um, okay, but how do we use this now to, to create our list here? Uh, what we do is we add this loop down here, but let's comment it out. Run the script, super S, right now, super shift E, Now, right now it looks like this, you know. Uh, now I will create another array that will look almost exactly the same here. Uh, and this array will not contain different, it will only, uh, the values of this array will only be 1 or 0, you will see here. We change the name also because this is a different array modifiers but the, the the names are important that they are exactly the same here here and here but this time i set every value uh, God damn it, to zero so every time uh, for every key binding in in the json output you know uh, every time we, we find this, then it resets this array to every key will be zero. And then every time we find a, a modifier, we will set uh, uh, that key in the array to one. And by doing so, we know which uh, uh, modifiers uh, are yeah, active in this uh, key binding. So we change this to just mod here, because that will be, mod will be one of these strings, you know, or an empty string. And then we remove this part here. So we do this and, and then uh, we, we generate the list when we got all, all bindings. And then we just loop it in this order uh, that we defined at the top of the script. Um, so we, we loop it in the correct order and then we just compare. Is the super key a modifier in this key binding? Zero. No, it isn't. Is the old key a key binding? Yes, it is. And then we print that. Is the control uh, active uh, if this is set to 1? No, it's not. Don't print that, but shift this. And then we will always get the right order. Super will always be the first uh, printed uh, modifier and shift will always be the last. Uh, and it's uh, a, a fairly simple test we do here. Uh, in this for loop, we just do an if uh, modifiers m is equal to one because remember m is one is the name of a key in the array mod order and then we compare uh, yeah and then we can do this if it's one then k mod is equal to k mod plus m right i think this would work uh, sub keys Super S, Super Shift E, and now you can see Super is always printed the first. We can even do Super Control. We can be sure that Super is first and Shift is last and Control and Alt in between if they exist. And if we only have, like here, no key bindings, it also works. Pretty cool. Uh, uh, uh. Last thing here, remove the double quotes from the symbol here. And the symbol is either, yeah, you know, E or button 8 or whatever it is. And, and we store, we create, that is this uh, KSIM uh, variable here. So we could just use uh, something like, like the same when we catch the, the modifiers here. Uh, because $2, it could just as well be NF. Uh, but we don't need to look for any brackets here. We only want to replace double quotes. So we could actually uh, uh, write it like this, I think. There. 
now we should get a, a nice uh, first line here super shift e super control e uh, backspace button it yeah it looks fine it looks fine and i think we make a break there continue in the next video the 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 second line the command line here uh, is is uh, much uh, easier uh, because um, yeah it, it 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 will be much quicker to modify this and i think we can do both that and create our notification in 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 a 20 30 minute video so let's take it uh, make a break here and i see you in the next video have a great day everybody bye